this morning is Dr. Hamil Kothri, the Chief Medical Officer for Dignity Health, Central California Division. Good morning, Dr. Kothri. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, good morning, Alex. So let's first talk a little bit about what we saw yesterday. Once again, we saw another spike in cases, 42 cases. What's interesting here, Dr. Cothery, is for several days, uh, we kind of saw a dip in the curve, if you will. Uh, we saw about half of those cases in total each day. Um, is, is it surprising to see this spike all of a sudden? No, I, I don't think it's surprising at all. I think we anticipated this, and I think we will see this continue to rise for a little while. I want to talk about something uh, that, you know, we keep throwing all these numbers out every day. We, t we, we talk about the negative test, we talk about the pending test and the total test. Of course, the total test is going to be a cumulative number. Uh, that is going to continue to go up. But one thing that we're seeing is the increase in pending tests. So right now, there are 2,181 uh, tests that are pending. That is the most pending test that we've seen since testing started. Uh, is that alarming? It is. Um, it is somewhat alarming. Um, and part of the reason is, you know, we have a lot of these vendors that have reagents for us to use to get these tests. Um, there's a backlog on this. You know, they're, they're sending them to a lot of the hot zones and Kern County is still not considered a hot zone quite yet. So we are working at getting more tests and ability to test more. But, you know, it's going to take a bit of time, unfortunately. What makes Kern County a hot zone? Um, the number of cases. Okay, so what, what would that look like? I mean, I know that we've heard even from the federal government, uh, you know, they keep talking about how Los Angeles, the Bay Area and so forth, those areas are hot zones. Are we, are we on, the, on the track to become a hot zone or, or what? what? We are anticipating to become a hot zone. So we are preparing for that. Hopefully we don't, you know, we're, we're all hoping we're absolutely wrong. Um, and we don't become a hot zone. But unfortunately, at this current rate, we are a few weeks behind Los Angeles. And so we should see that hot, we should see our peak um, right around two weeks or so. Okay, that was my next question because in California, we're supposed to peak, the resources are supposed to, to, supposed to peak in like four days, according to the IHME study, which uh, even the federal government is using. So if California peaks in about four days, are, are you assuming, are you, kind of preparing that California or that Kern County will peak in late April into early May? Yes, and that's, so we have our own internal modeling that we've done at Dignity Health where, you know, it is hospital specific and county specific. So according to our modeling, which is more specific, we are looking at late April. So of course, we're seeing and we've heard that it takes um, several days for the results to come through for each test. Uh, we've heard upwards to uh, more than a week uh, here locally and even even for some people even longer than that. Uh, is it concerning that since we we have 200 or we have 309 total cases since the beginning of all of this, that's the total number, um, and, and we should note of course that 33 people as of Friday uh, are no longer at that threshold where they need to self-isolate. Um, but do you think that there are more cases out there in Kern County that have that are going undetected? Absolutely, you know, and that's always been one of our fears that there, being that we can't test everyone, there, this number is definitely a lot higher. What about the asymptomatic people that could be going out and about at grocery stores, still going about their day, they feel fine, they may be an essential worker. Um, is it concerning that there could be people that are asymptomatic and, and potentially infecting others? Uh, and that's been one of our concerns. So one of the things we've done, especially in the hospital settings around Kern County, is we've caught, you know, um, imp implemented something called universal masking. We're masking everybody. Um, I know the CDC has also made guidelines for everyone that's out and about to mask as well. So we're trying to limit the amount of spread from these asymptomatic patients. Um, we can't do it 100%, obviously, but we're trying our best at it. So you do think that people should go out, if they're going to the grocery store, if they're going out to a, a restaurant to pick up curbside or you know whatever it is, uh, going to these essential businesses, you think people should be wearing a mask? I, you know what, I think it's a, it's a good idea. However, you know, with the caveat that you've got to make sure you use the mask properly. Right. Improper use of the mask can cause disease as well. So, you know, I tell people, Google it, YouTube it, whatever you need to do, learn how to wear the mask properly. 
And then once you have it on, don't touch it at all. It, uh, the only time you touch it is when you're taking it off. And then if it's a cloth mask, put it right in the laundry. I want to go back to testing and what that process looks like. If someone is to get tested for coronavirus, walk me through that process of what, what it looks like. So there's several different tests. Um, you know, one is a, what we call a nasal pharyngeal swab, so it goes up in your nose or in your throat. We also now, Quest Lab is doing Speedum, so you can actually cough stuff up and put it in a cup and they can test that as well. And then we basically tell you, if you're a healthcare worker, if you're asymptomatic, we will allow you to work, making sure that we, we take your temperature several times a day, we mask you, we ask you to self-report any illness. If you're not an essential worker, we tell you to go and self-quarantine until we get the results back. Um, and like you said, that depends on the days it takes for the tests to come back. And it, it can, we are actually getting some tests back as soon as 48 hours. So that That's good to hear. But again, there are still some people, at least in the past, that had their test results come back about a week later. So if you are getting tested, if you're showing symptoms of coronavirus, should you begin the process of, the process of quarantining yourself? Yes. So if you're showing mild symptoms, um, once again, there, talk to your physician, go on to that virtual care web, um, app, um, talk to a live provider there, and then they'll, they'll be able to direct you. But most likely, if you have mild symptoms, we're saying self-quarantine for at least two weeks, once your symptoms are all done, at the end of two weeks, if you have no fevers, you're okay. Do you think once Kern County becomes a hotspot, we're going to see that, that number of pending tests rapidly decrease? I'm hoping not. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm hoping yes. Um, I'm hoping we get plenty of tests. Um, I know the Adventist Health Hospital is starting to do tests as well. Um, we have a hospital in Stockton that does a test, so we, we have a courier that takes tests up there. Uh, for our inpatients at the Dignity Hospitals. We're hoping to get our own tests here within the next week or so in um, Bakersfield for our hospitals as well. So as we become a hotspot, we should see more and more tests available. Which means results will be coming in faster. A lot faster, correct. All right, Dr. Hummel uh thanks so much for coming in every morning and joining us virtually to give us an update on the coronavirus crisis here in Kern County. And again, uh, you will be joining us every morning at 6.30 here on Sunrise to give us an update. Take care of yourself. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Well, so